Step two of the extraordinary year process is to look back at the challenges, the disappointments, the regrets of the year. What dreams were dashed? What expectations unmet? What promises were broken? Often as human beings, we really avoid this. We don't like to think about what went wrong. Just like last week, we talked about celebrating and acknowledging our successes. That's uncomfortable for us to pat ourselves on the back and say, good job. It's actually also really uncomfortable to, in a very open, authentic way, acknowledge what went wrong. It's really common that internally, we might beat ourselves up about something, but to actually get real, write it down and look at it, that we avoid, which is unfortunate because it actually can be very cathartic. We tend to swing between all or nothing thinking. So often we set ourselves up with a goal or a project or a deadline or something. And when we get close to missing it, we kind of think, ah, oh, screw it. I totally blew it. And then we're in the nothing zone. A good example of this is if you've ever tried a eating a healthy way. So let's say you've decided I'm going to avoid sugar or alcohol or gluten and you start the day off great. You're full of energy. You do great at breakfast. You do great at lunch. And then in the middle of the afternoon, those kind of doldrums hit and you end up going to the break room and grabbing a snicker bar. After you do that, you beat yourself up and think, ah, oh, I screwed the whole day up. So now forget it. The day is shot. The pendulum swings the whole other direction and then you pick up take up out on the way home and blew it with a bunch of evening, evening snacks even worse. So we tend to have that pendulum swinging very far from all or nothing, which gives us a very unbalanced viewpoint on our success and our failures. The invitation today is to see if you can pull back from the hyper focus on failures, which many of us fall into that trap. Um, when we hyper focus on what went wrong, especially if it's internally and we're beating ourselves up, it becomes a reason not to try. That robs us of the hope that we can do better. The way we build hope is having more things on our scorecard, on our self-evaluation than just the failures. That's why we did our accomplishments and successes the first week. And it's to look at what are the reasons that these things happened? How do I limit myself? That's coming up next week. Learnings. For today, grab your pen and paper, make your list. What were the biggest challenges, disappointments, regrets of the year? If you don't know where to start, ask yourself this simple question, who and what is pissing me off? Or who and what do I resent? And that will easily allow the answers to bubble to the surface.